This is from Mark Kriegel. Either Shakur starts throwing some combinations against this amateur, or don't be surprised when people start calling you a boring fighter. I feel like it's just an awkward fight, so he's coming in looking for one big punch. He got a lot of power. He was definitely one of the strongest fighters I ever faced. But I got the job done. I won every round. I dominated the fight. Every fight ain't gonna be how you like it. Every fight ain't gonna be won in a pretty fashion. It's gonna be some ugly wins that you get and you gotta take it. So after Shakur Stevenson put on one of the most dominant and exciting fights of the year against the longest reigning 130 pound champion in Jamal Herring, where Shakur threw seven punches combo and won via TKO. Even then, fans flooded my page with the comments you guys see above. Luis Angel said, quote, who won on the Stevenson versus Hearing fight? I fell asleep on the second round. End of the quote. Alexander Hernandez said, quote, they're good but boring. No power, no dropping people. End of the quote. Another person said, quote, who won? I fell asleep. So y'all get the point. This is the narrative they wanted to paint when it comes to Shakur Stevenson which mainly there's four people to blame mark kriegel the racist decaf wizard who actually started all of this tessator timothy uncle tom bradley that follows tessator lead and last but not least shakur stevenson if you may wonder why is shakur to blame well while old media was painting the narrative that shakur is a boring fighter shakur decided to grab the brush and paint along with them check this out yeah, she doesn't mess around, but neither did you tonight. What was it about your performance that made you happiest? Uh, I want to thank Tim Bradley. Tim Bradley was uh, criticizing me, calling me boring. Um, so I wanted a fun fight. I wanted to perform, show my skills, show my boxing skill, my defense, my power. Um, I showed everything tonight. You did. What was most impressive is you were standing in front of Jamel Herring, and much like you have been able to do throughout your career, you were unhittable for... I guess apologizing to the fans as if he committed a crime wasn't enough for Shakur. He also had to thank Timothy Bradley for stating that he almost went to sleep watching him fight, which by doing so, Shakur Stevenson put a green light on his head to be criticized by old media as a boring fighter for the rest of his career. Even if Shakur wins his next 10 fights by knockout in a row, Mike Tyson style then has one lackluster performance. That's when they will automatically criticize him and remind him that he's a boring fighter. Time will tell. However, we don't even have to wait that long because that's what they did to Shakur against Jemaya. They automatically forgot about all of the other fights prior to the Jemaya fight where Shakur was throwing five to six punches combo. The moment he has a lackluster performance, they label him as a boring fighter which if this reoccurs, where it most likely will, I'm referring to Tessator and Mark Kriegel calling Shakur boring, then Shakur Stevenson has no one to blame but himself. If you may wonder why that is, it's because of the obvious fact. Instead of Shakur Stevenson calling out the racial double standards by pointing fingers toward Mark Kriegel, who initiated all of this, and Tessator, in order to make them feel uncomfortable being racially biased, where next time they will be forced to think twice before doing so. However, would you believe Shakur Stevenson thought it was a good idea to thank Timothy Bradley for calling him boring? Now, it's one thing if Shakur is not aware of the double standards in the sport, but it's literally happening right in front of his face. To that man in the mirror, his self. A few months ago, he came out and said that they hate black people, which I reported on it. So Shakur knows what time it is. All of this boring talk is nothing but code words. That's why it makes no sense instead of Shakur using his platform to bring awareness, at least to his own situation. He does the complete opposite. Now I need y'all to follow me here. I'm not asking Shakur Stevenson to call Mark Kriegel and Tessator racist. All I'm saying Shakur Stevenson needs to make these people feel uncomfortable with their own skin being racially biased. If you may wonder, how can he accomplish that? It's very simple. Whenever old media asks Shakur Stevenson about being boring, all he has to do is respond with a simple rhetorical question, which is, did you say that about Lomachenko when he lost to Teofimo Lopez, where he only landed six punches for six entire rounds because he was too busy moving around, AKA running around according to old media. 
Did you label Lomachenko a boring fighter because of that? That's what Shakur Stevenson should have had asked old media from Timothy Bradley, Mark Kriegel, Tessator, and any reporter that brought up that question. That's how you get the job done and put people in check by exposing the double standards in a form of a question. Let them hang themselves. You just give them the rope. Because when it comes to reporters, one thing they hate is to be exposed for being biased. See, being a fighter nowadays is not enough. These fighters have to get informed and challenge these reporters in order to put them in their place. If not, they will step over you. And to make matter worse, fighters the likes of Oscar Valdez hide behind commentators and reporters such as Tessator and Mark Kriegel, including Timothy Bradley. You never heard Timothy Bradley call Lomachenko boring, and you never will, because he goes by the code. That's what you call an Uncle Tom. Tessator, yes a boss, whatever you say will go across. That's what Shakur has to realize. So instead of thanking Timothy Bradley, he should have checked Timothy Bradley. Because I know what they manipulate Shakur Stevenson with. Oh, this is prize fighting. You have to sell tickets. You have to become a bigger star. You do that by being exciting. But wait, how come that same logic don't apply to Lomachenko? How come you never said that about Lomachenko? He has to sell tickets too. Matter of fact, he can't even sell tickets, which I'm going to elaborate on that in a few. See, this is only one performance. Would you guys believe Mark Kriegel said he's willing to forgive Oscar Valdez for cheating because of the previous fights he had. They were great fights and he's not willing to throw him under the bus just for cheating one time. But he's willing to throw Shakur under the bus just for one lackluster performance and forgetting about all of the great fights he had on ESPN. How ironic is that? More importantly, how come Timothy Bradley, Tessator, Mark Kriegel never said the same thing about Lomachenko though when he lost to Tio? Keep the same energy, don't flip. The same logic should apply to Lomachenko. If this is about entertainment, becoming a star, selling tickets, excitement, so on and so forth. See, I know Timothy Bradley is trying to brainwash Shakur Stevenson by mentioning all of these talking points. He probably even tells Shakur, I'm not an Uncle Tom. I'm just being objective. But what Shakur Stevenson should ask Uncle Tom Bradley, if you are being objective, why you never said you almost fell asleep watching Lomachenko lose to Teofimo Lopez in a stinking fashion? Why you only critical of black fighters? Uncle Tom Bradley, we all know what time it is. Lomachenko got the complexion for the connection to get the ultimate protection. You guys think it was a coincidence ESPN erasing Lomachenko loss? That's why Timothy Uncle Tom Bradley sticks to the code. Remember, Timothy Bradley said Terrence Crawford beats Floyd Mayweather, but with that same breath, he said Lomachenko is a better fighter than Terrence Crawford, and he's pound for pound number one. Even though he believes prom for prom, Bud Crawford beats pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. What kind of twisted logic is that? Nevertheless, back to the point. The million dollar question, why are they so quick to call Shakur boring, but not Lomachenko? The answer is in the question. It's all about the yin and the yang. Because if you compare Shakur versus Jemaya to how Lomachenko fought Teofimo Lopez, it's like comparing the way Mike Tyson fights to Muhammad Ali, where Mike Tyson is Shakur Stevenson in this equation. That's how much more aggressive Shakur fought than Lomachenko did. But peep this, they call Shakur boring in winning, but Lomachenko the matrix in losing. Furthermore, what would you expect from Uncle Tom Timothy Bradley? They called him boring his entire career. I'm not saying he was. Bradley was an action-packed fighter. I'm just saying that's what they called him. Old media, that is. Now he's pretending as if he never dealt with that double standard. Again, Tessator, yes a boss. I will do that for you. I will follow the script. You don't even got to tell me. I'm going to read your mind. Yes a boss. What's even more disappointing is that Andre Ward is as bad as Timothy Bradley nowadays. Even though they called him boring as well.
But okay, you have guys like 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 Hopkins, who was a great fighter. Boring. Boring. Uh, Ward, great fighter. They're boring, right? So that's probably why Timothy Bradley was. Saying. That's what he said. So both Tim and Andre Ward know what time it is. Matter of a fact, what Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney are going through today is exactly to a T what Floyd Mayweather already went through. Floyd Mayweather will put on all of these exciting fights and have one lackluster performance, then they call him boring. Check it out for yourself. And Diego pulls himself up by the ropes. He doesn't look like he has much left, Jim. No, he's... Right hand, another knockdown, fifth knockdown of the fight. Three, fifth knockdown of Corrales' four, career. Five, another mark of what a performance it's six, been. Terrific fight, terrific performance by Floyd Mayweather. But you know, if you don't get, I don't think we've given Mayweather that much credit. He got in there and took some shots himself. Well, never gave up. The night that he destroyed Corrales, he got a lot of credit and he deserved it. He was brilliant that night. The night that he tore up Gennaro Hernandez, he got a lot of credit and he deserved it. If Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, could be as uh, solid out of the ring as he is in the ring, he might achieve the stardom that he so desperately wants. What he wants is to be the biggest attraction in the sport. What he says right now is, I'm the most talented fighter in the sport. I ought to be the best paid. Well, if you, then he should have been a golfer, where the guy who finishes number one gets the most money. In this game, it's the guy who puts the most behinds in the most seats that gets paid the most. And will that crowd appeal come for Floyd if he continues to win his fights? It's conceivable if he fights more big fights and fights this way. Uh, never going to reach the plateau of a De La Hoya. That's a rare plateau. Uh, but he could, he could uh, later on in his career, fight some of the top guys and uh, be an attraction. If he fights this way, to be crowd pleasing, could it shorten or compromise his career? It could, but uh, what choice does he have if he wants to be the popular fighter that he claims he should be? King of the game. I just heard him say, Jim, his hand hurts. Well, he used it a lot. CompuBox numbers showed Mayweather throwing 600 punches and landing 283, and uh, at least half of those were power shots. Corley, 150 out of 657 and he took a lot of leather. But Mayweather was moving up to 140 pounds. In his last fight at 135, fighting Philip Endo in a very offensive style, he knocked Endo out in the seventh round. An outstanding performance by Mayweather. He knew the flaws in Ortiz. He seized on them. He took some of Ortiz's good shots. For once, we can all say he was exciting in the ring as he has been outside the ring. Harold Letterman. Larry said Floyd Mayweather will never be bigger than Oscar De La Hoya. Man, that sure didn't age well. He also said when Ortiz literally jumped to headbutt Floyd illegally, that was Floyd Mayweather's first exciting fight in the ring. Like the Corrales, Chop Chop, Gotti, Sugar Shane Mosley, Hernandez, Indom, Zab Judah, Ricky Hatton, and the list goes on and on and on as if these fights never existed. As if he didn't call these fights. We all know what time it is. That's what Shakur and Devin Haney are dealing with today. History always repeats itself. However, at this point, it's up to Shakur Stevenson to stand up for something or fall for anything. At the very least, stand up for yourself. Because thanking Timothy Bradley, that ain't it. I don't think Shakur Stevenson have any clue or realizes how much damage he did to himself by doing that. That was equivalence of stabbing himself and everything us new media have been fighting for in order for him to be treated fairly. And if you're not going to stand up for yourself, at the very least, don't stab yourself while people are standing up for you. Man, talk about making our job harder. We really going up against the grain. Even the fighters we fight for end up doing themselves a disservice. 
Now Shakur Stevenson have a target on his back of criticism that's yet to come. All because Shakur Stevenson made them comfortable being racially biased toward him. So what do you expect? Isn't it ironic though that you have professional fighters such as Benavidez, Jojo Diaz, stating that Shakur is one of their favorite fighters. On the other end, old media trying to paint the narrative that Shakur is a boring fighter when he's one of the most exciting fighters in the sport of boxing as a whole. That's why Shakur is high on that coincidental list, with the truth being laid out. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below, subscribe below, and click on the notification bell to be continued. On the next episode of Aki, Aki, Ak TV, peace, and I'm on to the next one.